In this video, we're going to see how to make a realistic render with a very minimal effort using Lumia. What's going on, fellas? I'm Zio, and this is your creations. You can find me on Instagram as Zio. And let's jump right into the video. So, what are the factors that makes a render photorealistic? One, details. Two, textures. Three, lighting. Before getting into those details, consider joining this small community by subscribing to the channel for new architecture content every Wednesdays. So let's start with the 3D model. I'm using SketchUp here. What I really mean detail is to replicate a scenery as close as possible to real life. Most of the things are not actually perfect in real life. There is actually an aesthetic value in imperfections, you know. For instance, this kinky carpet, the folds and twist of this bed, the misalignment of this chair, etc. Every cuts and corner of each and every component makes a drastic difference. After making sure that the scene is perfect and well detailed, export that to Lumion. I'm using live scene so that whatever change I do in SketchUp will simultaneously update inside Lumion. Okay, let's see if our second point is all set, which is texture. To make things pretty simple, try to feed all the texture in the SketchUp itself, so that we just need to tweak the properties of the materials. With the material tool, select the pre-imported material. Under the new tab, select standard. This will impose all the properties in your material. Now we need to tweak it to our needs. For instance, this is a wooden texture, but it looks kind of weird now. And there is no tactile feel imposed. To bring it, just click here. It creates a normal map based on the color of the texture. You can flip the direction of the texture. Also, you can increase or decrease the depth of the material using this relief slider. Gloss controls the shininess of the material and apparently reflectivity controls the reflection capabilities of the material. A well-polished wood can have a bit more reflectivity, right? And a little less glossiness because of the roughness of the texture. Likewise, for the mirror, we just need to pull the sliders all the way to the right. Add a reflection control component from the utilities tab, set it near to the area you need to check the reflection so that you can have a preview of how the surface reflects after render. Let me fast up the texturing process.
We also play with the scale, position, add some weathering effects, etc. with this. Let me know in the comments if you need a tutorial covering all these functions. Okay, now let's set a view. Make sure that the view is well composed. A low angle suits this scene. To ensure that the vertical lines are perfectly aligned, we can add a two point perspective effect to it. Now we have set the view and the textures are on point. Let's move on to the interesting but bit complicated part which is lighting. Before setting the lightings, let's take a preview. Um, not so good right? Let's consider this as a cold region. I'm also making it snow using the precipitation effects and I'm setting the preset to overcast and setting an overcast real sky. Let's adjust the heading and the shadows come inside our composition and also it helps to light up the room. I'm making this material light up. To do that select standard, click on this button to open the extra options. In the settings tab increase the emissive slider. Now we got a glowing material. Also you can add lights wherever possible. I'm gonna keep it minimal but still gonna add some lights to the bedside lamp and this wall lamp. Let's add some reflection planes for that make sure that the reflection effect is enabled. Click on reflections from the effects list. Click on the edit button. Now add a reflection. Click on this plus icon. Now you can select any reflective face to impose a high quality reflection in this selected area. Let's take a preview render. Still the lighting is not right. To make it right, we need to adjust the color using color correction. Which is all the basic functions like Lightroom. We can also take a render like as it is and do it in Photoshop or Lightroom. Check this video by clicking on this i button or check the link in the description to know more about that. By the way, make sure to leave a like on this video for the YouTube algorithm. Also, you can use the real sky and exposure option to play with the brightness even more. Now this seems almost color corrected but it's not intriguing any motions, right? I mean it's not good enough to attract some eyes. To give it that punch, we can use the analog style effects. Choose the one you like and reduce the amount till you are satisfied. Now you are good to go and you can now definitely take out the output. Comment down your feedbacks and questions below, I really like to read them. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can be a part of this small community. Signing out for now, catch you guys in the next video, see ya.